the beautiful tourist beaches, plentiful fishing grounds and bustling sea transport lanes of Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific support hundreds of millions of people. This area, the Coral Triangle, is so rich and diverse, it's been called the Amazon of the Seas. The Coral Triangle takes in Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. It makes up only 1.6% of the Earth's surface, but it is home to 75% of the world's coral species, one-third of the world's coral reefs, and 40% of the planet's coral reef species. Half the world's tuna originate here. The Coral Triangle this beautiful natural resource is in danger from the global and local stresses of the 21st century. Overfishing by large commercial companies and small-time fishermen is a major concern in the seas. Destructive and illegal practices such as bottom trawling, which uses gigantic nets to scoop up everything in their wake, also threaten the ecosystem. Blast fishing with dynamite and using poison such as cyanide can turn reefs into barren, lifeless deserts. I think in the future, the number of fish will go down. Maybe there will be more fishermen than fish. Pollution from industry, urban development, agriculture and mining all add to the eco-danger. Climate change threatens to increase the level, acidity, and the temperature of the ocean waters and to alter weather patterns. The threats and challenges, global and local, are immense, and they cannot be tackled alone. The six governments of the region came together to launch the Coral Triangle Initiative in Bali in 2007. In May 2009, the nation's leaders endorsed the initiative in Manado, Indonesia, with a further commitment to regional partnership and action. Programs and solutions are being supported by the Asian Development Bank in partnership with the Global Environment Facility and governments of the U.S. and Australia and international conservation organizations. Throughout the region, alternatives to old ways are being introduced and are proving successful and profitable. In Bali, a project to catch tropical reef fish for export to aquarium hobbyists has grown into a viable business. Fishing with poison has all but disappeared. I can see that using fishing nets instead saves the environment and allows the number of fish to multiply. Throughout the region, traditional methods of sea protection are being reintroduced and new techniques are established. From declaring areas off-limits to fishermen to creating sea gardens to patrol the waters, communities are learning the benefits of looking after their resources. We help in protecting the seas and in educating the villagers not to throw garbage in the ocean and not to destroy the marine life. Protecting the seas means protecting fish breeding grounds. If they disappear, an entire industry could collapse, and with it, tens of thousands of jobs and a vital food source for millions around the world. It also means protecting a region that attracts 18 billion tourist dollars a year. At Puerto Princesa in the Philippines, a partnership between environmental health and community wealth is thriving. Replanting mangrove forests along shorelines has increased sea and bird life and brought the economic benefits of tourism and sustainable fishing. I'm so happy with our catch now compared to before. Mm. I can see that this is a benefit from taking care of the mangroves. Protecting the riches of the Coral Triangle will cost far less now than in the future. Investment, education, and a commitment to action are needed now to create and provide alternative and sustainable means of livelihood.
Together, the nations of the Coral Triangle have committed to protecting this vital economic and environmental resource.